devil's gonna flick his tail here. Just off the entrance to Newfound Harbor, where I'm getting some lee shelter and the water depths are only about 12 feet, I decide to drop anchor temporarily to wait out the squall. But this turns out to be a mistake. Well, that's how much I have left. I'm anchored right at the entrance to Newfound Harbor. These winds are gusting 35, maybe 40 knots. And uh, the anchor rope paid out so fast, I couldn't get it cleated. I finally got it cleated and I had one foot of road left. I nearly lost my anchor. Uh, this is a pretty shit situation. We are kind of, I mean, it's a very wide channel. So when I first dropped anchor, I had lowered the mainsail, but when she fell off the wind, enough wind got into the mainsail and started driving her forward, which in turn, once the anchor bit, was pulling the road out so quickly that I simply could not get it looped around the gypsy. And I finally managed to get it cleated, but uh, as I showed before, only with about a foot of road left, so very nearly just lost all my ground tackle. And there was so much strain on that road, there was no way I could get it around the gypsy and begin cranking in the road until conditions began to ease about 20 minutes later. And so now it's eased somewhat and I'm able to get her to sail a little bit to uh, assist me in pulling up the road. So it looks like I'm beginning to recover the situation now. Afterwards, I emailed a fellow sea dog describing the incident, and he responds, You had a scare. Ouch, I thought, that's a brutal thing to say, yet perfectly true. Veteran sailors don't normally have scares. Such things typically only reside in their memories, the occasional scares which attended the mistakes and challenges of learning to sail. I can recall one such memory, though I have many of when I was maybe seven or eight years old, a brisk afternoon sail with my father on Fisher's Island Sound. Just before entering the break wall into Stonington, my father says, okay, now you're going to take the Genoa down. I leap into action, but when he releases the sheet and the Genoa begins to flog, I am suddenly overwhelmed by its power. And it terrifies me so much that I begin to cry. I look back at my father, who remained standing at the helm waiting for me to get the Genoa down on deck. I persevere and the Genoa is tamed. So when that anchor road was paying out so fast I could not even get a turn on the gypsy, knowing that the end of the rope was fast approaching, I could feel those old icy fingers of fear on my neck. I've dealt with all kinds of situations, lightning storms, gales, reef passes, I've watched my craft lift on great ocean waves which came roaring up astern so menacingly that I thought my little ship would be overwhelmed. Yet she rose. The sea broke all around in white and turbulence, fizzing like soda pop. Occasionally there was a kind of serenity, but rarely were such moments terrifying. Centuries of evolved ship design combined with a skill set older than Odysseus and the little craft will pick her way through, deft as a dolphin nature's destructive power artfully shrugged. 
But by an innocent mistake or two, the mariner can suddenly find his craft awkwardly situated in the sea. Now the raging wind and waves drive chaos. Every attempt to regain control is undermined by another emergency. Decades of meticulously acquired skill and regimen are called upon simply to avoid panic, to gather, to gather one's thoughts sufficiently to get to the next task, to avoid disaster. Often in such situations, disaster is only averted by luck. The veteran sailor knows this, and that is what scares him. into the narrow channel going around the north the north of Fleming Key here always oh, a little bit of tricky sailing because of the currents that run through here so with the strong winds easing off for a few days I returned to Key West so it's kind of the yo-yo cruise here and as usual to reprovision and water up and also have some fun ashore. And suddenly I'm back on the coast of Maine. Hardly any wind and fog. Of course, the winds just have to fall light in the most congested area. Well, at least we got out in most of the traffic. And actually, that does look like some wind coming. Looks like a little darkening on the water there. Fingers crossed. Because uh, not much chance we're going to make it in before dark. Because we still have, from where we're we at now, about 25 miles to Newfound Harbor. But uh, we got to get moving here. Ahoy, everybody! It is the 19th of February, 2022, President's Day weekend. Today is Saturday, which is why I got to frequently look over my shoulder here because uh, there's a ton of boat traffic out here. And uh, even though we're, we're starting to draw away from Key West, departed Key West around noon, uh, however, ended up getting become for uh, almost two hours are just very light winds and so uh, have made very little progress until just about the past uh, half hour and then of course this wind came in with a vengeance actually had to put in a reef in the main uh, ease up the balance a bit she's going nice now so we've departed Key West for the last time this year and uh, uh, went ashore and had a last night of fun in Key West and to enjoy a little civilization. Uh, on my way to Newfound Harbor, we got another round of easterly winds coming. Uh, not as strong as the last one. Uh, the last round was pretty much uh, three, four days of 20 to 25. This is going to be about three days, three again, three or four days, but uh, sort of around 15 knots. So not a huge amount of wind, but it's going to be hard uh, now that I've started uh, retracing my tracks heading off now uh, back up the keys in a northeasterly direction that means those winds are pretty much right on my nose um, so so I have to wait for weather windows to move so I'm gonna go to Newfound Harbor and hang out there for a little while and I'm all watered up loaded up on provisions and I can get more provisions on Big Pine Key and, uh, and then when the next window comes I'll hop to Marathon and then when the next window after that, uh, hop back to Miami. I'm hoping to get back in Deltaville. Uh, I hope to be back in Deltaville early April. Uh, I'd like to get a jump on my haul out because I've uh, got a lot of plans for this summer. 
So I'd like to get the haul out and get back in the water by May, middle of May, and uh, head back up to New England and maybe Canada. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how things sort themselves out there. Right now, Canada's in is in a bunch of political turmoil. So, uh, but hopefully that'll all sort itself out. Uh, because we got slowed down by these light winds, we're not going to make it in until after dark. But as long as those winds remain northerly, uh, should be able to sail right in there on Port Tack and uh, just use my chart plotter. I've been in and out of there a couple of times, so uh, I, know, uh, I know the depths are... I know I'm not going to hit anything. And uh, just going to enjoy... Just to enjoy a nice, it looks like it's going to be a nice late afternoon, evening sail. And uh, winds are forecast to remain basically like this for the next four or five hours. So hopefully that'll be enough to get us into Newfoundland Harbor. So hopefully it'll be smooth sailing and just some nice sailing today. Uh, which will be a nice change from what we've been dealing with in the past, uh, past, past week or so. So, and uh, I'll talk to you all again next time. Take care, everyone.